What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Tritons Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made this. Beautiful, delicious, smoky, tender, amazing, smoked sloppy joes with some homemade tater tots. Coming up. This is a chuck roast. Ooh, pat it dry. And what I got here is a USDA Prime Chuck Roast. Picked this up at my local HEB grocery store. And as you can see, it's got a nice amount of fat to it. But I suppose you could use whatever kind of cut you want. You know, brisket would work, short rib would work, whatever you got lying around. Because today we're taking a look at the Sloppy Joe. And of course, I'm gonna try way too hard, which means I'm gonna be grinding my own meat, which is why I got this Chuck Roast. But if you're doing this at home, you can just also buy some ground meat. But to add some smoke flavor to our Sloppy Joe, first thing I'm gonna do is throw this on the pit, cold smoke it for a while. That way when we grind it up, it'll theoretically still be raw but contain a whole bunch of really good smoke flavor. And to be completely honest with you, I've been debating all day whether or not I should put any seasoning on this because like I said, we're gonna throw this through the grinder to end up with some chopped beef. And normally you don't season meat before you grind it or even sear ground beef if you're making burgers, but we're not making burgers and we kind of want this to be nice and pebbly. And I know we're gonna have to adjust the seasoning at the end when this is being turned into sloppy joe, but I think I'm gonna hit it with a little SPG just in case. I think that'll help pick up some smoke flavor and I don't think we're gonna oversalt it. So good old fashioned Shreds Barbecue SPG. And we're just gonna do a nice little coat Coating. And we're not gonna forget the sides. That would be a rookie move. Flip it over both sides. Just a nice light coating. And that is looking pretty much perfect to me. Let's go ahead and fire up the pit. And on the pit we go. Got a little bit of charcoal over there. Not enough to produce a lot of heat, but enough to keep that log smoldering for a while. It's a small log of post oak. And as you can see, we're already getting a lot of smoke coming out of there. So got the meat offset from the fire. Because again, we're just trying to get some smoke flavor on this. We're not really trying to cook it. So I'm gonna shut this down, let it rock for probably an hour or two, but we'll just keep an eye on it. While we wait for that meat to smoke away, let's move on to our side dish, which today is gonna be some good old fashioned tater tots. Cause when I think about a sloppy joe, I think about a sloppy joe paired with tater tots. So let's get these shredded up. Next up, I've got some really hot water here and I'm gonna go in with a big fat pinch of salt. That's a big fat pinch. And a splash of some white vinegar. And we're simply gonna boil these for about 10 to 12 minutes. You're not trying to cook these through. The outside will soften up and the inside will stay nice and firm so we can shred them up and get the best of both worlds. Side note, if you're not deep frying your potato skin peels, you're missing out. And after about 12 minutes, these potatoes are coming out of the water. I'm gonna stick these on this paper towel to drain off some extra moisture. And I'm gonna pop these in the fridge or the freezer for a little bit to get nice and cold so we can work with them. Now that our potatoes are nicely chilled, we gotta grate them up. And we just got this uh, food processor in the mail about 10 minutes ago, so we're gonna test it out. Got the grating attachment on here. And the reason I got this one is because it's got a really big shoot on it. Not sponsored, this potato has got a curvature to it and it's literally the exact same size of this. Like, look at that. Nice. That's funny. So I'm just gonna shove it in and here we go. Wow, that was quick. And out we come. Don't know why I just emptied that out when I have two more potatoes to go through. <laughs> Number two. That just saved me a whole bunch of time. Now, as quick and convenient as that was, putting them in sideways means we have some really long shreds and that is too long for a tater tot. So we're gonna go through and chop this down really quick. Now these are all chopped up nice, nice. We're gonna go in with about a tablespoon or two of some all purpose flour and about a teaspoon or two of some corn starch. I would have used potato starch, but we are fresh out. Nice big fat pinch of kosher salt. Buns, we should make some tater tots with different rubs in them. Also gonna hit this with a little bit of onion powder. Beautiful. And now we're just gonna get these all mixed up. And now that our pile is done, you can easily go through and start forming these by hand. Not much to it, except uh, I'm gonna try something else. Now, clearly this is unnecessary, but I think it'd be nice if they're all super uniform, but we're gonna see how this goes. Ooh, trying to figure out the best method here. <laughs> Ooh, that's a nice clean tot. I'm either gonna do them one by one like this or do it one big rope and then just da -da 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 -da. There it is, tater tot number one. Yeah, we'll try a rope. This is actually pretty nice because it compresses them again. 
All right. And just like that, got a whole bunch of tater tots. A bit tedious of a process, but I mean, pfft, we're making tater tots. What do you expect? And you could go through and form all these ends so they're a little bit nicer looking, but I think all those little craggly ends are gonna be nice and crispy once we fry these up. But before we do that, I'm gonna pop these in the freezer for a good long time to get frozen solid. And conveniently, at the exact same time, off comes our chuck roast. That was on there for about two hours or so. Definitely looking nice and smoky, still feeling nice and rare. So I'm gonna wrap this up and stick it in the fridge to get nice and cold so we can grind it up. Next up, let's go ahead and get some potato buns started for these eventual Sloppy Joe sandwiches. <laughs> Starting with going into our bowl here with some warm water, one egg, ooh, our yeast, and our sugar. And mix this up a little bit just to break up that egg. Next up, going in with some all-purpose flour, some dough conditioner, salt, and some mashed potato. I just peeled this, baked it off for about an hour, and then sent it through the potato ricer. And this is my first attempt at making potato buns. But I got this recipe from Brian Lagerstrom, and usually his breads come out really well. So, onto the mixer, we go. And we're gonna mix this until a shaggy dough ball comes together. And once it's come together a little bit, in we go with our softened butter. And now we're gonna need this for about 10 minutes. And just like that, out this dough comes. Beautiful looking dough, very nice and soft, nice and stretchy. A lot of good gluten development in there, but now I'm gonna form this into a nice little ball here. Looks so nice. And into a grease bowl we go. Cover this up and we're gonna let this rise for the next hour, two hour and one half. While we wait for that dough to rise, I think it's time for another episode of Bones Try Something Weird. <laughs> Featuring Mighty Joe. Joe, what do we got on the menu today? So this is called Tail Jut. It's salted shrimp. It's kind of used as like a condiment. Baby shrimp. Those black dots are their eyes. Oh, it's soupy. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's sitting in the brine. Definitely don't want to eat a spoonful. Okay. Uh, <laughs> chug the whole thing. <laughs> oh, God. You're going to take that much? Okay. I guess. Uh, it won't come off the spoon. It's oh, fine. my. It's fine. That's, don't judge the it condiment won't based come on. Off the <laughs> Oh wow, that's really yeah, salty. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not something no. you should eat on its own. No, not like that. No, oh. definitely don't do that. That's I the wrong water. way. <laughs> that's the wrong way to eat that. About the same amount that he just put in his mouth. You take some of the shrimp, you put a little, a little bit of that brine in there, a little bit of sesame oil, some cochucado, and you have a nice little condiment that you uh, put like, you know, a shrimp or two on a <laughs> bite of food. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> good God, this thing is heavy. And now that our chuck roast is nice and cold, Pat it dry. So now through the grinder we go. I got the coarse die on there. We're just gonna send it through once. And just like that, some beautiful smoky ground beef. And normally at this stage I'd go through and I'd mix it up or I might send it through again just to work the meat a little bit so it forms into burgers better. But we're not making burgers today. We're making sloppy joes. So this nice crumbly texture should be perfect. And now finally, at long last, it's time to make our sloppy joes. Starting, we're going into this pan with a healthy dollop of some Wagyu beef tallow. Love this stuff. And get that melted down. And then in with our onions and our bell pepper. And now in with our ground beef. I'm just gonna put it all in there. My only concern is the size of this pan, but uh, I guess we'll just have to figure this out. And after browning this for a good long time to make sure everything is nicely cooked, we're gonna go in with a couple tablespoons of some tomato paste and cook that for a minute or two just to get the raw edge off of it. Also gonna go in with some flour just to make a bit of a roux so this thickens up nicely. And again, cook that down for a minute or two. And once everything is toasted away and when you're worried about things starting to burn, we're gonna go in with some homemade beef stock. Two cups. Beautiful. Deglaze that pan and make sure everything's nice and clean. Matt, is this the part that makes it sloppy? I think so. Is this the slop? Yeah. Just for you, buddy? I'm going to make it extra sloppy. Extra sloppy for you. Beautiful. And while this cooks away, I'm going to go in with the rest of our ingredients, including some brown sugar, some Worcestershire sauce, some ketchup. Oh. Reminds me of wing night. Some mustard, some black pepper, and some kosher salt. And at this point, we're gonna cook this down for a little bit, let all those flavors come together, and let that stock reduce down until it's the perfect consistency for a sloppy joe, because right now, it's a little too sloppy. Now that our dough has been fully proofed, out it comes. Boop. 
Beautiful looking dough, nice and stretchy. And now we're gonna portion these out into 100 gram dough balls. We're gonna do what we always do, fold and tuck all the seams underneath to give it a nice smooth top, just like that. And then give it the old table roll, beautiful. And now these are all rolled up, I'm gonna put some grease plaster craft over the top and let these rise for about 30 minutes. It's been about 45 minutes, maybe an hour. And uh, as always, these aren't getting as big as I thought they were, but the boys tell me I keep saying that and they keep coming out all right. So we're gonna just move forward. So here I got a little egg wash per use usual, just an egg and some water. We're gonna just brush these down. Beautiful, now into a 400 degree oven. These go for about 15 minutes. And fresh out of the oven, looking absolutely beautiful. I don't know why I doubted these buns, but brush them down with some warm butter and uh, now we're gonna let them cool down. Back over here, our sloppy joe consistency has been really dialed in, as you can see, reduced down a lot, looking nice and just perfect for stacking on a sandwich while still being nice and sloppy. Let's give it a taste. I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt and it's pretty rich. So uh, we're gonna lighten it up with a little red wine vinegar. It's that little kiss of acid at the end. Beautiful, keep this warm and there's only one more thing we need to cook before we make these sandwiches and that is our tater tots. All right, all of our tater tots are frozen solid. So now we're simply enough. Just gonna drop them in the old deep fryer. And I really hope they don't all explode. Looking pretty good, nice and golden brown. And as soon as they look the color of a nicely fried potato, out they come. And fresh out of the deep fryer, these were kind of successful. You know, some of these look pretty good. Nice little tater tot there, but they did kind of explode. You can see all of this potato that fell off. They started sticking together and uh, not the most successful cook, but uh, they're still fried potatoes and they're gonna be delicious. And at long last, it's finally time to assemble our sloppy joes on these beautiful Beautiful buns. Beautiful looking dough. Love the crumb on that. It feels incredibly soft and squishy. Definitely keeping this recipe around. But of course, it's a sloppy joe, so we gotta toast these off. Pretty nice looking toast. What rating do you think that Clayton will give me? 9.4. Everyone go follow, rate the toast on Instagram, and we'll find out how these did. <laughs> Assembly of the chuddy sloppy joe. Starts with a beautifully toasted, freshly made bun, obviously. And we're going lunch lady style. Nice scoop of our sloppy Joe mixture. And this one's actually pretty tight compared to a lot of sloppy Joes that you see that are just oozing and running down your arms. And I'm okay with it because it smells really good. More slop? More slop. More slop for Papa Gambino heard. And the best part about this sandwich is it's super simple. Boop, done. Gotta tell you, Joe, I've never spent this much time making a sloppy Joe. I don't think anybody has. I don't think, I've never made one. I've had quite a few when I was a young lad. It's got some denseness to it. All right, going for bite number one. Wow. Ha. Ha. <laughs> that is really good, but it's really hot. You guys might want to wait a minute. Right off the bat, it's got the classic flavors of a sloppy Joe, right? It's got that sweetness. It's got the ketchup vibe, the mustard vibe, but it's just better. I think the beef stock is really what helps it out because it added a lot of gelatin, which is why it's not uh, really slopping. Say, yeah, that's probably why it's holding together as well as it is. Although we do have some slop coming out, but boys, Sloppy Joe time. When was last time any of you had a Sloppy Joe? My mom used to make them all the time. Really? Really? Out of a yeah. can? No can. It was good. Well, I hope this one's as good as the one your mom makes in Canada. <laughs> I did not grow up with these really? at all. I had but I gained the, an appreciation. Yeah, like once or twice as a kid, but from the can. I got some. Yeah, I yeah. say, you feel the heft on that? <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. You're the one who said there's you wanted slop. two scoops on there, bud. There's slop. Mm. Oh, you're slopping on the board. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Show me the slop, Joe. <laughs> Joe? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I just fell off to the bottom. Now, Joe, I hear word that this sandwich was actually named after you. That is correct. Um, <laughs> I was born in 1992, I believe that's roughly when the canned uh, man which <laughs> came into existence. So rich. I was just gonna say. The bun, man, mm -hmm. like holds it together. Yeah. Even, I mean, don't take mine as an example. <laughs> I was unsure about the smokiness, like if it would be good, but it's like the perfect hit. Yeah, it's, it's so, so good. It's not in your face at all, yeah. but especially with all the bold flavors that are in here, mm -hmm. it adds a really nice background note, but that is a damn good sandwich. It has the same amount of smokiness that you would get in like a really good chopping sandwich. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get like that barbecue sauce, but you with the bun, but you still get that smoky beef flavor. The red wine <laughs> vinegar really um, cuts through the richness as well. Absolutely. Yeah. My that, one complaint, it's, mm -hmm. it's a little sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> we also had a tater tot failure over here, but you know, I made these a couple days ago and it went pretty well. You know, luckily people love to watch me fail at things. So we're gonna have to revisit these. This is not a fail. No. <laughs> I think it's this good. is so good. I think <laughs> the texture on this batch, you wouldn't know that these were homemade. Right, the pieces that you get on the outside that get a little bit more crisp, like, I don't know. I don't They're know. really tasty. I like it. 
I kind of like them better. And like, who doesn't love tater tots and a sloppy Joe, right? We're gonna watch some cartoons after this. <laughs> War movies. Mm-hmm. With some whiskey. Ooh. It's a winner for sure. And it doesn't need anything else. Like we were talking about throwing pickles or cheese or something random on there, but it's a meal in and of itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotta try it, folks. It's good. To get sloppy. Good stuff! I like that quite a bit. Shout out to the folks over at Blue Note. Thanks for sending us a couple of bottles. They sent the juke joint and, what's the other one? The other one, the crossroads. Great stuff. Clearly we enjoy it. Get some Does green it, apples. Really? Yeah. Does it taste chocolate to you? Oh, after that's, the what, Joe? that's what I got too, yeah. right? It yeah, tastes you're chocolate. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sloppy Joe's and Black. You're right. When I, before I had that one, it tasted like green apple. Yeah. Yeah. What a pairing. And with this very last bite of Sloppy Joe, I think it's time for the official taste test. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make an absolutely fantastic, smoky, sloppy Joe sandwich. I highly recommend giving this one a try, you know? There's something so nostalgic about a sloppy Joe, but when you actually put some time and effort into it and incorporate all these amazing flavors, it truly is better than anything I've ever eaten out of a can. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button on YouTube, know by dropping a like on this video. If you do, give this recipe a try for yourself. Be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go. Cook something outside. Peace.